As we saw in the earlier videos about lighting calculations, we need a normal vector in order to determine how much light is reflected by the surface. On a smooth mesh without hard edges, normal vectors of each triangle are averaged over their shared vertices. This vector is then sent to the vertex shader as part of the vertex data. In order to calculate lighting per pixel, we use the interpolated normal vector in the pixel shader. Although this is sufficient for smooth meshes, it's not enough for simulating the majority of common surface types we see in the real world. Most objects have a lot more surface variation, which is often captured in a high resolution 3D model using millions of polygons. However, it's mostly impractical to use the high res models directly as game assets. Instead, a low resolution model is used with fewer polygons. If we had a way to know what the normal vector in the high res model would be at a certain position, we could still use that vector for lighting. Fortunately, there is a method for recording normals at each pixel in each triangle. If the 3D mesh has a UV set for texturing, then we could use a texture that contains vectors instead of colors and we could sample the normal vectors from the texture, which is called a normal map. As I mentioned, the RGB channels of the texture contain the X, Y and Z components of a vector in 3D space. Furthermore, since this is a unit vector, we only have to put the X and Y components in the texture. The Z component can be calculated in the shader. In general, normal maps are calculated in the software that was used to create the 3D model or some texturing application like Adobe Substance Painter. So now we have these vectors, but what coordinate system are they related to? Obviously they can't be in world space, since that would make them invalid as soon as the object is rotated in any direction. Also, we couldn't use object space, because deforming the object by scaling it or during an animation would invalidate the vectors. One coordinate frame that's invariant, however, is the one used for the texture coordinates, or the UVs of the model. So we can use that to construct a coordinate system. Using the UV coordinates, we can construct two perpendicular vectors on the plane of a triangle. Since these are parallel to the triangle, they are called the tangent and bitangent vectors. We can use tangent and bitangent vectors together with the interpolated normal vector to form a tangent frame. Don't worry, I'll try my best to explain. Let's consider this triangle with three vertices with position P0, P1 and P2. Each vertex has its own UV coordinate in the texture space. We can calculate a vector that points from one vertex to another by simply subtracting one vertex's position from another one. Now we want to find two axes on the plane of this triangle, such that subtracting the UV coordinates of the same two vertices would yield the exact same vector in this coordinate system. This is kind of the central equation in this entire explanation, so please take a moment to understand it. T and B are 3D vectors in object space that form a 2D coordinate system on the surface of the triangle, such that the edge vector of the triangle is the same in this coordinate system as it is in object space. We can try to find T and B by taking the edge vectors and write two equations with two unknowns which can be solved using a bit of linear algebra. First, let's name each component so that we can write the equations down using a more compact notation. Next, we write them in a matrix form. Let's call them A, B and C, where we know the values of all components in matrices A and C. Matrix B can therefore be calculated by dividing matrix A by matrix C. Of course, there is no such thing as a divide operation for matrices. However, we can achieve the same result by multiplying A with the inverse of C. Matrix inversion is a topic of linear algebra and I'll not explain it here, but it can be calculated easily for 2x2 two two matrices. We can even use an online calculator to do it like so.
Now we can plug this in our matrix equation here, which gives us the solution. As you can see, the right hand side of the equation can be calculated since all values are known. Now that we have t and b vectors, we can form a tangent space together with the vertex normal. However, before using that as is, we need to realize that both t and b are on the triangle plane, whereas the normal vector is averaged over multiple triangles. Therefore, the axes of the tangent frame aren't orthogonal to each other. We can, however, nudge them a little in order to make them orthogonal. Suppose we have a unit vector a and another vector v. We can compute the projection of vector v onto vector a. This is the component of v that's parallel to a. We can calculate the rejection of v from a simply by subtracting the parallel part from v. This is the component of v that's perpendicular to a. This procedure is known as the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization. We can use this to calculate the perpendicular part of t with respect to normal vector n. Now that we have the two unit vectors that are orthogonal to each other, we can calculate another vector that's perpendicular to both t and n by taking the cross product of the two vectors. This is the b vector, which can be calculated in the shader. However, we need to remember whether the coordinate system is right-handed or left-handed. For this, we need to look at the original value of vector b that we got from our matrix calculation and see in which direction it's pointing. Then we can define a value, sigma, that's plus 1 if the cross product of t and b points in the same direction as the normal vector, otherwise it's minus 1. In the shader, we can use the perpendicular unit t vector, the normal map and the value of sigma to calculate b. The three vectors t, b and n form an orthonormal coordinate system where t stands for tangent vector and b stands for bitangent. As the naming suggests, both vectors are parallel or tangent to the polygon surface at the vertex for which we calculated the vectors. When a vertex is shared by multiple triangles, the vectors are averaged in the same way we averaged normal vectors. The interpolated tangent space is used as the basis for the normal vectors in the normal map. Looking at this example, we see a texture that can be used as a normal map, but it doesn't look like a typical normal map. It has black as well as transparent areas, and some parts of it have colors which we don't often see in a normal map. To decide whether or not this texture can be used as a normal map, we first sample a grid of pixels evenly distributed over the entire texture. In order to do this analysis as quickly as possible, we don't sample every pixel, but a maximum of 4000 pixels. This is a random value that you can choose freely. Since a normal map is allowed to have transparent as well as black pixels, we are going to ignore any samples that are taken from those areas. The samples that aren't transparent and do have a color value are then treated as 3D vectors. We can calculate the length of each vector. We know that normal vectors have a unit length, so we can test if the length of each sampled vector is larger than some threshold value. We set this threshold a bit lower than 1, because sometimes the length of normal vectors is not exactly 1, depending on the software that was used to generate the normal map. If the vector's length is larger than this threshold, we count the sampled pixel as an accepted sample. Moreover, we'll accumulate the color of all accepted pixels in order to compute the average vector length later on. If the sampled vector length is less than the threshold, we'll count it as a rejected sample. After we are done sampling, we check if the number of accepted samples is high enough. For example, we can decide that at least 25% of all sampled pixels should be accepted. In that case, we can calculate the ratio of rejected versus accepted pixels. If this ratio is about some threshold, we conclude that the texture is probably not a normal map. Finally, we calculate the average length of all accepted samples, and if this is within a certain range, then the texture is likely to be a normal map. 